All right, so what are we looking at right now? We're looking at a piece of paper. Yeah, so this is the whiteboard, and on this whiteboard, what are we going to be talking about is how to, you know, excuse me. Okay. Right. Poetry. So, you know, there, I believe there are people out there that ask, huh, so how do you exactly do you do this poetry thing? You know, it sounds hard. Well, it really isn't. Sometimes you just got to start off in a ridiculous fashion. So let's, you know, take a look at a, you know, a place that you visited or a person that you met. So let's write down some details first. Um, sorry, I didn't think this completely through, but we're just going to pull anything out of our, you know, heads, so just any random thing. And we're just going to teach that, you know, so this may not be the most professional video, but that's okay because you're going to learn something today. So let's say, you know, you walk down the street and you have a city full of apathetic people, kind of like how Philadelphia PA can be sometimes. So, you know, let's just write that down. Apathetic city. What else do you have? You have a, um, you have pretty much a, um, what else, what other kind of city do you have? Well, that could just be it. Let's say it's somewhat run down a little bit. Excuse me. I may sound a little bit tired. Somewhat run down. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then what would you, you know, what you're doing is gathering images. Okay. Because if you're not trying to gather the image, that might be why you're saying how to write poetry, or you may have an image. You might not know how to put it into a rhythm, a rhythmic pattern. Now here's the thing. Poetry does not always have to rhyme. Does not always have to rhyme. So itty bitty short stories, right? You could call a one paragraph short story a poem. So we'll get to that next and what that may look like. But, you know, here, here's some, uh, poetry. So let, let's do it on the other side of this, this whiteboard of ours that we're calling a whiteboard, which is not really a whiteboard at all. Um, let's just write down an itty bitty poem about the apathetic city. Let's write down some rhymes. You just come up with something random. So the city that has no feeling, right? That's what we're going to call it. Has no feeling. May never experience. Oh, goodness. Great. Some part of the wall is in the way. That's supposed to say experience, right? So look, that part of came right. Healing. So when I write something like that, well, they have no feelings. And why might they not have any feelings? And they treat each other like trash. Maybe they need to heal. Maybe they're dealing with trauma. You know, sometimes when you write these poetries, maybe you should just sit back and wonder. Okay, but also, if you want, you can also expand on your vocabulary, too, so that you can have a bunch of things to rhyme with or whatever it is you want to do. Sometimes it does help to expand on that when you're writing. So that's 
excuse me, sorry, that's important. The city that has no feeling may never experience healing. The worst resort to stealing. The worst people. Oops, I'm missing a word. That happens a lot. And that's because you're thinking it, but your hand is ahead of your your uh sometimes your your head is ahead of your hand and your or your hand is ahead of your head. <laughs> the worst resort to stealing. And sometimes I like to rhyme as many lines as possible. You know, that's just me per personally. So are you able to rhyme eight lines together? But you got to have a vision for that. You got to have an image for it. Because what are those eight lines talking about? We could show you a wrong way to do poetry if you like, but I'm just going to show you the right ways. What is the topic? The topic is a city of people that seem to be so apathetic. They have no feeling. They may not have any healing. And if a certain someone feels disenchanted or disenfranchised, they may resort to stealing because they may think that someone else has more than they do. That's the world that we do live in, don't we? That is if you're showing it. If you're showing that, that you may be careless, but you got more, a person may be curious about you and they may or may not want to take from you if they feel like, you know, you're an easy enough target. They may or may not want to do that. Could be a friend might decide to backstab, cheat, whatever, you know, stuff like that can go in the poem, right? They may resort to stealing. Yep. So what's the next line we could say? What happens after that? But well, we could stop there. That's your three lines right there, person. Those are your three lines right there. Would there be an emotional uh, sensation, or should I say no? Would there be an emotion for the, for these three lines? Yes. And some people may say, oh, I'm not emotional enough to write poetry. Well, are you going to say you never experience emotions? Because when you do, that might that might be the time for you to write the poetry. You know, that's just something to think about. I doubt that anyone is never emotional. I doubt it. You may want to hide from it. So if you're hiding from it and you feel like, you know, um, that's the reason why you can't write out your feelings, like you're not emotional enough to be a writer. Maybe you're not emotional enough to be a storyteller. Uh, maybe you're not emotional enough to um, do anything in your mind. Well, maybe you should go take a hike. I, I, ironically, when I go hiking, uh, what what happens is I I end up just jogging ideas around in my head, and then that's how I get ideas. You know, that's the crazy part. That's where I get a lot of my ideas from. It's what's what's stored up in my skull. You know, and well, after I'm hiking and all that stuff, probably should go hiking again. We can start brainstorming again if you want. But yeah, I mean. That's one poem. I could do another video on the next one. Would you like to do one on an apocalypse? We're just going to start with three lines. We're going to, we're, 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 we're going to do baby steps. We're going to do baby steps. And this might be the last thing, but well, I think we could add more, one more line. So let's stare at this for a bit. Okay. What is one more line we can add to this? Repercussions, right? Repercussions get to reeling. Oops, that's sloppily written. So that sounds like an incomplete sentence, but we'll explain what that is. Repercussions are really in what? Like a, a fishing line. Um, well, they come after the person, the police. So you could say dot, dot, dot. 
start reeling in exclamation mark exclamation mark because of the position it looks pretty bad but you get the idea the city has the city that has no feeling may never experience healing the worst resort to stealing and repercussions start reeling dot 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 in there so i basically twisted how that's supposed to be read that's pretty much what i started doing so what are they reeling in well the police come in they capture that person and then the cycle continues a little bit People don't care about each other. Someone feels disadvantaged. He feels like somebody has more than he does. He feels left out or she, they start stealing. It's almost like that's their way of asking for communication because they don't know what to do with themselves. But what can you do in a world where people keep to themselves? A lot of people will keep to themselves, which they have a right to do that. I mean, I do that. Um, but it's different. Well, apparently it's different for some people when richer people do it because... Someone feels left out. They feel like, oh, they have more. Then if it's a particular community, that particular person says, oh, if they're part of our community, they won't, they, you know, the cops won't believe them or care about them as much as somebody from a different community. Yeah, it, it gets like that sometimes. So I didn't want to make this a, you know, philosophical thing or a out of the world thing, but sometimes you could start doing that and that's where your poetry comes from. That's where your poetry comes from. Like I said, this is supposed to say experience up here. There you go. Experience is bad angling. But we're going to start with four lines. They all rhyme. And then that's the end. Start baby steps. Just start with your baby steps. And then we'll do another video. Okay. So this is 12 minutes for today. And I may come back later. Just, just, it, you know, just to give you something, you know, jog in your mind, just get something started person. Remember we wrote down some details, did a little bit of bullet points or, uh, dash points or whatever you want to call it. Just remember, it doesn't always have to rhyme. So our next poem, non-rhythmic poetry, we're just, I'm just going to give you an idea. Now I have a book that I'm going to be publishing and it's going to be called how to write poetry. And I've, I'm, I'm, I'm more than you know, a third of the way done, at least, at least I feel like I'm still adding stuff to it. I'll be publishing that to Amazon. I'll be putting that down in the description in the future, but I do have other poetic pieces, you know, um, and short stories, you can consider them poetry as well. Short stories. So I do have a book that I did publish to Amazon. I could put that in a description to give you an example. You can read the, the first short story is very short. It's like what two to three pages. And then I have another short story. It might, it's like almost 10 pages. And then, you know, some short stories can last about 20 pages. Like other people's short stories. I have like six page, six to seven, eight page short stories in that book. It's just an example, you know? So I'm going to put that in the description. You can recheck that out, check that out and get an example of like what I did in my works. Ready? I'm going to show you my whole author page of everything I did. I even have a book on there called, how to overcome writer's block. So that'll be that. And then of course I'm going to be writing a spirituality book. What exactly is spirituality? Spirituality could be anything. So I'm going to write that down. And if for whatever reason, somebody has like, you know, other ideas say, Tina, what if I, what, what, what if it's also this or some other thing? Then they can write that in the description where we could talk about that outside of the book and I'll just add that, throw that into the video and then we could talk about it. And you can just write whatever you want to write in the comment section. That would be awesome, dude. <sighs> okay, but yeah, short stories. Short stories. I have an entire book. Okay, it's at least 77 pages. It's like my first longest book possible, but the other books are like, what, 20-some pages? Um... 16 or 17 pages long. Um, yeah, I'll just put that in the description box. I'll show you my author page. I have four books in total published. One is like strictly poetry. And then the rest, two of them are like, okay, how to craft and conquer your inner power. That's like a motivational book that one morning I just woke up and I just got to write in that book. Just randomly, that just came to my mind. I said, you know what? While this is fresh in my mind, let me just type this up. And this is all I have to put in this piece of literature. I'll just put it up there. You know, I'll just toss it up there. That's how I felt about it, you know. So 
I think this whole author experience is pretty cool. I'm excited about it. And that's the first of the videos for when it comes to poetry. So I guess in a sense, I'm more of a poet than a, you know, story writer. But then again, poetry is story writing because this is telling a story. This is telling a story right here. So have images in your mind and just get the writing. Just write anything. I, I literally just took time to write anything. That's what I really did right there. You know, roll down some details. What, what, what is this city going to have in it? You know, but we didn't talk about how rundown it is. Yeah, did we? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll redo this poem, right? Maybe that could be the next video. Redo this poem or keep what we have and then add details for this part. So basically the top bullet point or would be these three lines. The next set of bullet point, or should I say the next bullet point could be the next set of lines and it would be about this right here. Somewhat run down, probably more than somewhat run down. But you know what? That's that. <sighs> Love it. You guys have a beautiful, wonderful day. You may see me again in a few minutes, or maybe you'll see me again tomorrow. But stay tuned for some more teacher time. We're going to start teachering. I'm just kidding. Yeah, stay, more for, uh, stay tuned for more lessons. This is going to be awesome.